And let's start with question one, which has four options, and keep those in mind when I'm drawing this picture, that your options are shepherd's purse, or narrow-leaved hawksbeard, we have flixweed, or we have kochia. Those are your options. So there's a cotyledon, and because it's a dicot, it has two cotyledons, so we'll put those cotyledons in there first. Okay, and then the first tree leaves come in, and we've got oh, my inability starting to show already. Okay. There's one first true leaf, the other first true leaf here. And that should probably get you pretty close to figuring out which of the weeds it is, but just in case, we can do this as well. Okay, question two. Green foxtail, yellow foxtail, black grass, downy broom. There's the ground. This is about two inches tall. That should help you figure out some of the answers. And then the thing that I think will really help you out will be this. And let's draw a close up of a leaf. Coming off of that stem. All right. And then we've got this sort of where it attaches the leaf blade to the stem. And then that. Okay, question three. Prostrate knotweed, wild buckwheat, biennial wormwood, or cleavers. There's one cotyledon and two cotyledons, and then there's a leaf. And let's draw another one just for fun. Question four. We have options of storksbill, volunteer flax, or roundleaf mallow, and leafy spurge. All right, I should be able to stop there. I love this particular one. But I'll keep going a little bit more. All right, the options for question five are prickly lettuce, volunteer flax, uh, spiny annual sow thistle, or Canada thistle. So there's a cotyledon again. It's amazing how when I'm looking at spring seedling ID, I'm looking at a lot of cotyledons, eh? Let's draw these in for you. Put some hairs on here. I have to tell you those are hairs because otherwise you might not get that. And then get that true leaf coming out. And this is probably what you're gonna see in the spring, but just to make it abundantly clear what I'm drawing, let's go with this. And there's the mid vein and then these should help you to the end. Okay, question six. We're looking for either cleavers, volunteer flax, perennial sow thistle, or Canada thistle. There are cotyledons, set of true leaves, 
another set of true leaves and it just keeps growing and growing. Question seven. Our options are prostrate knotweed or cleavers or red root pigweed or water hemp. Okay, there are our cotyledons. And let's go to our first alternate leaf. And then it would grow up and there would be another alternate leaf that would come up and so on and so forth. All right, on to question eight with options of Canada thistle, narrow leaved hawksbeard, or perennial sow thistle, or dandelion. It's a pretty distinctive leaf. So maybe put another one over here. All right, and then let's put a bloom in maybe just to help seal the deal. There, we'll just go. A little bit of artistic license there. But I think that should give you all the features that you need. Question nine, the options that I'm giving you are quack grass, wild oat, volunteer barley, and volunteer wheat. I've already drawn the stem of this particular plant and you can see where the leaf blade attaches to the stem, the, that there are maybe some appendages that are likely going to help you with identifying this particular weed. But I'm gonna draw one other thing, and it's the thing that if I were in the spring, I would use for identification. I'm gonna grab my, my trowel, and I'm gonna dig something up, Probably going to have a couple little roots like that and it's going to have a shoot coming up like that. Question 10. Options of smartweed, narrow-leaved hawksbeard, wild buckwheat, or cleavers. Where's our cotyledons? Let's get this first true leaf out here. And then, if this wasn't a whiteboard, I would try to draw in white, but on both the upper and lower surface, there would be white hairs. There would be a little something there, and then another leaf would be over here, and where that node is, there would be something there as well. And again, same sort of thing. Okay, question 11, we're looking at options of barnyard grass, yellow foxtail, quack grass, or downy brome. And we're just gonna draw. And another one here, and there. Okay, little roots. There's the ground if you're wondering. We're gonna say this is about two inches tall. I think you've seen this weed before, so let's differentiate it. All right, and then that's sort of where that leaf blade would attach to the stem. Okay, that should help you distinguish what this one is. Okay, question 12. We have options of smartweed, wild buckwheat, hemp nettle, or cleavers. So it's a little so drawing the cotyledons here. And just a few little fine hairs even on the cotyledons. Now when we draw the leaves they're opposite so draw two that are approximately the same size. 
and hairs on them as well. Question 13, we're looking at green foxtail or yellow foxtail, quack grass or downy brome. So let's draw the leaf coming out here and then back around like that. And then we'll see just here, little identifiers right there. And if that isn't enough of a clue, we'll draw a little grass and here's your ground level. And we'll draw this. There'll be another one coming up there. And another one. You get the idea. Okay, so for the question number 14, we have prostrate knotweed, we have wild buckwheat, biennial wormwood, or cleavers. And then first true leaves look maybe something like that okay question 15 we have options of wild mustard volunteer canola volunteer flax or cleavers so drawing some cotyledons and then there'd be true leaf there, another true leaf out over here. Okay, but here's how I really scout. Those are not hairs. That's feeding damage. Question 16, options of shepherd's purse, Stinkweed, flixweed, or Canada fleabane. There's a cotyledon. There'll be another cotyledon there. And then we start to have leaves. Hard to draw to make anything, but it's a relatively boring plant. But you can see that just sort of forms a bit of a rosette. Question 17. Options of prostrate knotweed, cleavers, redroot pigweed, or water hemp. So cotyledons, fairly long, oval, almost a lancelate shape. Okay, maybe not the best leaf shape. Let's try that again. And then maybe little hairs. Question 18. We have options of Canada thistle, narrow leaved hawksbeard, perennial sow thistle, or dandelion. So there's a couple little cotyledons. Really spiky little leaves. And a mid vein. Then we'd have another one coming down here. Spike off the end. All right. So there's if we had a seedling, and I'll be honest, I don't see a lot of seedlings. I see more this kind of a thing. And then, then another plant starting up here. And usually some hairs on here too. Question 19. Wild mustard, volunteer canola, volunteer flax, or cleavers. All right, and then Get some true leaves going here. Now that could be maybe one of a couple different options. One of the things that you're gonna see on the stems for sure is gonna be fairly good little hairs. 
Question 20 with options of night flowering catchfly, wild buckwheat, or broadleaf plantain, or white cockle. I think that's one of the distinguishing characteristics right there. Certainly the vein pattern on these leaves. Question 21. Hopefully you can tell that this is a grass weed again. And we're going to go with the options of quack grass, wild oat, volunteer barley, and volunteer wheat. In this collar region, there is an absence of oracles. The other thing that you might notice, if I can get this to draw, is you might see little hairs there. But the real way that I identify this particular um, weed is more by the... There's roots, there's the leaf, and this is a darker colored seed. Question 22. Options of Canada thistle, narrow leaf toxbeard, perennial sow thistle, or dandelion. So there's one called Leaden. We're going to have sort of a spatula shaped, a little bit wavy type of a burst true leaf coming out of there. So that would be what a seedling would look like. Not very often that you're going to see that in the spring. Probably going to see more of a rosette type of a scenario. And that's going to cause you to dig around and notice that you've got a whole bunch of them developing from underground roots. All right, question 23 with options of night flowering catchfly, Canada fleabane, broadleaf plantain, or white cockle. So cotyledons, kind of an oval, oblong kind of a cotyledon, and a few little hairs maybe along here. Hard to see probably, but they're there. Opposite leaves. They all have hairs on leaf surface and along the leaf margin. Okay, on both of them. And just as a final clue, this sticky one doesn't develop until much later at bud stage. So that's not an identifier at this point. For question 24, it's deja vu. So the seedling looks a lot like one of the other seedlings that we've looked at, and I can't really draw it any better. So I'm gonna use the same seedling picture. So your question has the options of prickly lettuce, volunteer flax, spiny annual sow thistle or Canada thistle. And so let's just figure out the differentiation. And I'm obviously not drawing every detail in the way I need to, but I think this will be the thing that gives you a more uh, clear idea of which one this is. All right, let's give question 25 a whirl. Options of wild mustard, volunteer canola, volunteer flax, or cleavers. The cotyledon. Here's the other cotyledon. And then Question 26, options of barnyard grass or yellow foxtail, quack grass or green foxtail. And I'm not even gonna finish the leaf. So there's that idea. Here's where one of the identifiers is. 
here's the big one. Because you already know two inch tall grass plant, I've drawn it a bunch of times. There's your key. Question 27, options are chickweed, wild buckwheat, hemp nettle, or lamb's quarters. Cotyledons. A little more oval than that maybe. Sort of a broad type of a leaf. And then this farinose or fairy dust substance that seems to accumulate mainly there. Question 28. Chickweed, night flowering catchfly, lamb's quarters, or cleavers? There's our cotyledon. There's a pair of true leaves. We're going to have another pair here. Something along those lines. Question 29. We have options of green foxtail, foxtail barley, quack grass, or barnyard grass. And spring seedlings are just really fine leaves with a little if it's overwintered, you're going to have a better leaf sort of system. And it's going to be fairly fuzzy. And the roots are just fibrous. Okay? Question 30. We're looking at night flowering catchfly, Canada fleabane, broadleaf plantain, or white cockle. And this is a winter annual, so it overwinters as a rosette. Start off with these very little oblong cotyledons, some rounded first true leaves with a little bit of a stalk on them. And these are fairly like hairy. And you'll find uh, it's a rosette. So more hairs. And the leaves, eventually you'll see a, a longer stalk on them and sort of some teeth almost in on them. Still very, very hairy. Every leaf here is going to be very hairy. 